So uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Dilip Krishna. I'm part of the PLM team here at Anuta. So what I'll do now is to walk you through a round of demo uh, of Anuta Atom and Atom Cloud. All right, so let's uh, get started. So what I'll do is I'll walk you through an agenda first and we'll, you know, with, with every slide that I show you here, we're also going into the, the UI of Atom and then I'll walk you through what is uh, happening there as well, right? So we'll start off with uh, one of our biggest announcements like uh, Kiran mentioned, this is about Anuta Atom Cloud. Uh, SaaS based offering and uh, you know while we know that all the uh, features in Atom is going to be available as part of our Atom cloud as well we've made sure that the lot of enhancements that we bring in to make sure that it is it is you know catering to all the SaaS audience so uh, we'll go through some of the customer experience that we've built uh, how we can handle the remote agents and then some of the self-service capabilities around the services and the workflows and of course a bit around the multi-tenancy aspect so let's go into the uh, the UI screen right now All right, um, so once uh, the user comes into the Anuta Atom Cloud, they'll be welcomed by this particular screen here. And this is like the SaaS portal for them, where we're gonna show them what exactly the status of all the different components uh, of Atom. So you'll see that here. Then you can also see what is the license usage. They may have signed up for a particular tier, so they can go ahead and look at that. Then we also uh, are mindful of the fact that the SaaS is primarily driven by self-service. So we wanna make sure that they are equipped with all that information right uh, within the platform itself. So there'll be product videos that you're embedding. Then we also have documentation, especially, specifically contextual documentation with every screen so that they get that very good idea on how exactly they have to go about using it. Then they have also a chance to report a bug or even you know we have dedicated uh, Slack channels that will be allocated to each of our customers so they can reach out to our uh, our teams and then of course we have the uh, blogs and all the uh, the new things that are coming out with will also be available to them then of course the the most frequently used services that we're showing here so this is more like to entice them in terms of you know uh, kind of tell them what exactly the, the the competitors have been using and this is also going to be backed by a crowdsource analytics and as and when we bring that in that is this is going to be backed up by that and then they also have this opportunity to go ahead and submit a feature request and submit some csat scores etc now, once they come into this portal and they get a good idea on how this is going to be used, what they would then do is go ahead and uh, you know start adding the agents. So we have this concept of remote agents, which is to handle all the latency and bandwidth requirements. So we can go ahead and place this agent with closer to their the customer network, maybe they're deployed in the data center, or it could even be our cloud agent, which they can use. So here, what they would do is they can go ahead and uh, check out what exactly uh, are the kind of agents that they can go and add. For example, we already have two remote agents that are attached as you can see right and uh, they can go ahead and first uh, give us a range of ips for a specific regions for example let's say these are different data centers in different regions they can go ahead and feed in the management ip of that particular range uh, uh, the uh, ips of that particular set of devices and then they can go ahead and start creating the agent so that's this is this particular section where they would go ahead and select an ip range and then finally uh, copy the security token that is generated as part of the uh, device and the the agent installation and uh, also the upgrades, uh, we also want to make sure that they can go ahead and immediately upgrade. So you can also have an ISO file or it could be a Docker image or it could be, uh, you know, let's say uh, if it's being installed as part of the, uh, the uh, let's say uh, on, on a VM, the, the, the corresponding image is also going to be available to them. So they can just go ahead and uh, apply that there. And uh, once we have the agents installed, of course, the next thing that's going to do is uh, onboard the devices. We do have the support for uh, the uh, the brownfield discovery of, of the networks. Right? So we can go ahead and use the SNMP sweep or CDPL to seed mechanisms to basically go ahead and uh, uh, onboard the devices. Now, once we have that, um, what we made sure is that the next thing that they would do once the device is onboarded is to of course go ahead and uh, spin up the services. So what we've done is we have enriched the, the service catalog view. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we know that the, with, with the SaaS environment self service is gonna be very critical and we want to provide them with all the information that is available and possible so that they can choose what is best for their networks. So we have a bunch of out of the box use cases 
and uh, as you can see here we have got kind of to, uh, we are kind of listed what is the, exactly the service is what is the service standard is, is it an IATF model is it going to be a MEF compliant model okay uh, you know what are the devices that are basically used let's say it's a Juniper device what is the uh, OS that is uh, being used let's say what is a, a platform that can be where this particular service can be deployed all of them actually available is it a native model is it an open config model all of those are, are basically listed down here and then they can just go ahead and uh, you know uh, start uh, provisioning these services and this particular uh, uh, visualization is going to be available or the, the field the experience is going to be available across all the uh, all the different features of Atom so it's uh, we are also working on something like a splash page which is going to give them a much more detailed view of let's say they go and pick a particular vendor it'll show you what exactly Atom supports for that particular vendor what are the services what are the compliance rules what are the workflows all of that is going to be available to them so they can just go ahead and with the click of a button they can launch the services and make sure that it is it is uh, available available for them to use all right is, is now, this built in or are these services that you have to create as a user no so these services are already packaged into atom cloud all they have to do is just go ahead and uh, start uh, creating their own instances. For example, I'm looking at a particular tenant here, and you can already see that there are a few deployments that I already uh, have as part of this tenant. So similarly, they can go ahead and start creating these uh, for them, for their uh, for their networks. Could you build your own services? You could. So that's where uh, you know, we do offer that as well as part of our uh, one of the tiers where they could utilize our SDKs for service models and they could also use our workflow builders that is again built, built in within the Atom platform where they can just go ahead and start creating that. I'm also going to show you that as part of the, for part of the demo today. So the next aspect of, uh, of the, the Atom Cloud is the multi-tenancy feature. So uh, you know, we do have the two models, the silo model where the customer, let's say they want a, a completely dedicated system for them, that's that's of, of course available. But in, uh, you know, uh, in case they can be part of the shared model, we have that multi-tenant uh, infrastructure that's already built out in Atom. So you know, right from the, for example, this is the uh, the agent that we are seeing, that this is a different tenant from what I was, was showing you earlier. But here you can see that the agents are different from what we were looking at in the uh, in the earlier screen so here you can see there's an agent one and agent two they both are in the same atom cloud instance and uh, here you can see that different uh, the agents are different here when compared to the agents that are shown here so even the agent is tenant aware and then this tenancy is applied across all the different features right from your devices then of course the devices are going to be different for the customer so that's first first thing that we addressed and then we have that across the services across the workflows across the compliance rules and the alerting rules so that we have that segregation uh, and, and data isolation completely available uh, across all the different customers. All right, so this is the uh, admin view, and with, and of course, one more thing that I wanted to mention was, you know, while there is going to be a SaaS admin who is going to be looking at all this, he is also not going to see any of the customer data. And so this, what we are seeing here, is a view from the uh, admin view. So this is want to tell you that the that that segregation and isolation is going to be available. Uh, for, for the admin uh, admins as well. And in case there is a problem that the customer is facing, of course, they're going to allow us to, through a, a specific user, and then we can go ahead and, and even help them troubleshoot the specific scenario if required. But otherwise, uh, you know, there's, there's absolutely uh, no way that even the uh, Anuta admin is able to see any of the customer data. And of course, uh, this is the, uh, the just to give you an idea, this is the uh, Atom Cloud instance that I'm on. I'm, this is one of the tenants that we already have. The other tenant that we were looking at is, uh, is also available on the same, uh, uh, you know, same system here. 